Hello friends. In this video I want to show you how to make a puppet or a mask with latex or silicone but not with those expensive commercial materials. Instead with silicone you can find in a hardware store. Cheap and easy to make. I don't know if you know how these masks are built. I'll give you an example with the basic principles. First of all, we have to make a figure out of clay. We create this, this uh, clay figure, we surround it with plaster, then we take the plaster off and that will be our mold where we place the latex or silicone. We place it inside and then we can get the, the silicone off and we ha have a little mask. And I'm going to show you how to do this using common silicone you buy in the hardware store. Now, the figure I'm going to do is this one. This is a frog and I should be able to put my hand inside it to open and close the mouth. And for that we have to leave a space in here so we fill up those spaces where my hand will go with some material that we can take out afterwards. So the cuts in the material have to be very well done to be able to pull them out once the model is ready. Mm -hmm. uh, another option is instead of having my hand there is putting a mechanism to make the mouth open and close pulling a little string. Mm -hmm. I'm also considering doing something similar with the eyes so I can move the eyes about and give the frog some e expressions. Now, this video can get, get quite long. I don't know really how long it will be. So I suggest you watch the whole video because I have many interesting things to show you, not just the cheap material to make the masks. To find out what is this, where it comes from, what planet it comes from, the importance of this object for the future of humanity, you will have to see this video till the end. And it's no joke. It will surprise you. This is a foam ball. It has a diameter of about 12 centimeters and have zoomed the image to fit the diameter of the ball. The picture is a bit bigger than the ball, but basically it gives us an idea of the proportion. And with this I can take measurements and see how much clay material I'm going to put in the front. How much over here, etc. Everything around the armature I'm going to build. This block at the bottom of the head, a square block, it doesn't stop there. Instead it has to be inserted on a column which will be attached to a base firmly on the table so it's easier to work on the clay figure. Whether I have it standing up or on its side or whatever while I sculpt the figure and I turn it around etc. So we have to create this block around the wood. The wood has to penetrate there to about that height and there we will make another cut for the wood. Then around the wood we will place foam over here and we place foam over here in such a way to cover all the surface and a piece of foam here so this side is completely straight. Now we have to place this inside there, up to there. Okay, I'm ready with the base where I'm going to start making the figure. I stuck on the eyes so you can see where they go but then I have to cut them off because they can't be there when I'm putting the, the clay on. The problem is that this figure is a little big so putting our hand in there to apply silicone inside this sector will be very difficult. 
It isn't like applying latex. Since latex is liquid, you pour in the latex and you move it around, forming layers of latex inside. But with household silicone, we need a putty knife or plastic spatula to apply it because it's much thicker, gummier, and you have to spread it out, squashing it onto the surface. And getting your hand in there to apply silicone into the surface and eyes will be very hard. So we have to separate the figure into two parts. We will have two molds, one mold for the back side and one for the front. And for that we have to make a mold separator that follows the most convenient profile, the one with less complications for removing the molds later. When we place the clay, the clay will hold the separator into its position. And later, when we take this out, we will be able to separate the two molds of plaster. That line measures the diameter of the ball, so if it's too big, I just have to cut it down to the right size later. And now we eat the egg. These eyes have this PVC frame which will help with the movements of the balls. Rubbing against silicone probably makes movement harder. And you make a hole in the ball there. You place this wire inside and fill it with silicone. So it's fixed firmly there. It has to hang from the top of the head so the eyes are always in a normal position and only move when you make them move. Okay, we have the working place ready with a screen in view so I can follow the design. This must be done all at the same time, putting the clay and then the plaster. Now, the most important, the main thing, the first thing we have to do is to take off the tape that's holding the mold parts together. So we're going to start with that. We will take some clay to put it all around here. Okay, we're ready to put the plaster on the frog and we'll do that now. We will do this with ceramic plaster because I believe it lasts longer than common plaster. First, we will mix some plaster with water at a low concentration, a liquid consistency, so it can get into the details with a brush and is slow in hardening. We let the bubbles out for it to lose as many bubbles as possible. We should be using a bigger brush than this one, but it's the only one I have. A second hand when it's starting to thicken. We should go fast now because it's starting to set. So we should cover as much as possible. Better with a spatula or a spoon. Now we will prepare what is known as a plaster bandage, which you lay down like this, and it helps to strengthen the structure. Then we prepare some liquid plaster. We submerge the bandage in the plaster. And we place it on the mold. It is time to put a box on it so that we can fill it with plaster properly. Although it will increase size and weight enormously. The truth is, we only have one inch of plaster, so it is a good idea to fill it with some more. 
We'll see if our contraption can take the weight. Now we fill this part here on both sides and we're ready. There we finished. Now we have to wait for it to dry well, get hard. And I put a lot of plaster on. I hope I didn't put too much. But it would be worse if I would put too little. And it would crack somewhere or break. We'll see when we take it off. These are little mistakes, failures in the in the plaster, and uh, we can fix them covering the filling them up with with plaster. At uh, first, we have to clean the other sides with a with a brush and water to take off all the excess of clay. Now, a quick sprinkle with a hose or with a shower that'll get rid of what's left there. Okay, we are ready with the frog's feet. The feet will be in the front like this. And this is the visible part. So what should interest us is that this part comes out perfectly. That's why it is covered with plaster on this part. In contrast, this other part that goes against the body won't be visible. So it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. These feet have a complex form, so I couldn't make it as the other kind of mold. And this complexity refers to a finger that goes through here and out there. And this other finger goes over or under the other ones. And to apply the silicone in those spaces is going to be quite hard. But we're going to try it this way. If it comes out wrong, we'll have to repair it later, once the silicone is cured. The next steps consist of taking the clay out before it hardens, and we will collect all the clay in there to measure the volume of the spaces. Thus, when we finish putting silicone on the frog, we will see if we have enough silicone for the feet, or if we need to buy some more. There we are, the hands and arms of our frog. The silicone we will use is a typical household building silicone. General purpose, transparent, and it says here it can be used in aquariums, so it isn't antifungal. We will fill this vessel with silicone, up to a pair of lines below the top and we will mix it with this acrylic paint. Green for a frog. Now, the quantity of paint we must add to that amount of silicone will affect the depth of the color. Darker if we add more paint, 
later with less paint. The truth is, the colour or shade is not so important. Hopefully it should be dark. But what we can't get is one shade of green here and another shade there and a different one there because we would have a clown frog. We have to ensure an even colour all over the frog. Therefore, we will mix the same amount of silicone with the same amount of acrylic paint every time. For that reason, we will have to measure the bead of paint against the silicone when we prepare the mix and repeat that measurement over and over so we always get the same shade of green. Second, you don't apply the silicone like this. What we have to do is pour the silicone here first, as I said before. Here we mix in the paint and then from here we take some out with a spatula and we spread it out all over the surface of the mold, making a thin layer, not too thick, so it forms an outer crust and cures soon. And for the smaller details and curved parts, we can use smaller spatulas so we can get the right depth. Now, in this model, and in this one, a thickness of less than 5 mil or near 5 mil feels firm enough and capable of holding the shape of this figure. Apparently, 5 mil is enough. But since this figure is smaller, it keeps its shape easier. With this other bigger figure, we don't know if 5 mil will be enough or not. And we may have to make one or two layers, up to half an inch or so. I truly don't know. We will have to check that out in practice, because this silicone is very expensive, and the quantity required to make a mask or a puppet this size is not cheap. There are parts of the design where the colour to be used is not green but brown or yellow. And for that we will use these other acrylic paints which will allow us to paint those parts. Nonetheless, each colour has to be mixed separately and you have to define that before you start. So we will begin by placing Vaseline all over the surface of the plaster in order to help taking out the silicone after. The plaster tends to suck the Vaseline, so you should apply several coats of Vaseline. This is three lines downwards, maybe a little more. And we will add all along the full diameter of green. Let's see what tone we get. All right, I think we're okay. The color doesn't seem so bad. It could be darker, but as I don't know how much it will cover, I'll just leave it there. So we start from this line. From here down, we have another color a yellowish brown. So here we will start with the green and then we simply join both lines together. The problem with such a thick silicone is that it is difficult to get it even. Anyway, I learned a trick. We will see if we can apply it here to even out the surface of the silicone and get it into all the details below. If we put alcohol on a sponge and press it against the silicone, it won't stick to it.
but it allowed us to squash the silicone, pushing it into all the details and get the surface as even as possible on the other side. It doesn't matter if it's not even on this side, but on the other side, where it is in contact with the plaster, that is where it must be perfectly even. Okay, that's the first section. The rest has to be yellowish brown, this part here. Any imperfection that appears can be solved afterwards by adding silicone to the other side. Okay, we are finished with the first half mold, the part behind the head. Now let's move on to the second part. And this one has a few complexities. We have to stick the eyes there. And once we take out the cured silicone mask, we can remove the balls. They come out from the other side. The PVC frame will stay fixed in the silicone and we will be able to remove the ball and put it back in. Since we just used brown silicone, we will start with the brown part and then we'll paint the green part, which is the hardest. Okay, let's deal with the most difficult part. This sector has to be relatively thick, so it is fixed and solid. This part down here has to be relatively thin, so as to be flexible. And the thickness has to go on through the sides to give structure to the mask, so it is not too flexible. And then we join here. We will start on this side, joining brown with green and forming this thin part below the lips. The lips have to be thicker because then they are sexier. Well, it has hardened, cured and it's ready to take out. Now, to take the silicone out of the mold, the hardest part is the edge. So we start here, slowly removing this part. And once the edges are loose, the rest is relatively easy to remove. When we take the silicone out of the mold, we will see some remains there. These are very thin remains, the liquid plaster, and are easily removed with a knife or sandpaper. But before removing it completely and sticking both parts together, we can see that it is quite flexible. And it can't stay upright on the table. It falls over. Then we have to build a structure to hold it upright. And we're going to build that structure with the silicone parts inside their molds. Once we have that structure ready, we flip the mold, we put one on top of the other, and we stick the edges ensuring they are placed in the same position they had originally. This means applying silicone of the right color all along the edges, on both. We flip them, they get stuck together, and then we take out both molds. That structure that holds the head in an upright position will also move the eyes from one side to the other or up and down for different expressions. Both eyes have to move together and the structure will also help to move the mouth because it's too difficult to act like that with one's hand inside the mouth. It's better to have a mechanical mechanism that makes the eyes move and opens and closes the mouth to speak. And that structure is this one. These are copper wires, twisted and brazed with hard solder, giving shape to different parts following the outline of the front and posterior parts. I created a mechanism here that can move the eyes from one side 
to the other. Hope this works. I haven't tested it yet, but it should work. Also, this one here is supposed to go inside a silicone pocket I'm going to create here in the mouth, in the lower jaw, in such a way that it can be removed and installed at will. So we can remove the whole structure. The eyes also. The ping pong balls will be stuck here, but the copper bars can be removed and thus we can remove the structure from inside the frog in case it needs to be repaired or whatever. Now, to stick this half to the other half, we have several options. One is to place the structure inside, surrounded by both parts, and to go sticking the edges little by little until it's complete. The other option is to leave the pieces in their molds, and to simply flip one mold onto the other, after applying green and brown silicone along the edges in excess on both edges and supposedly they should fit with precision since that's the position they had been built. However, there's always the risk that the moles can get a bit displaced. So I believe the best option is first to stick the moles separately, putting the frog together little by little, sticking every section little by little so that every part sticks appropriately. And once it's completely assembled, then we insert the structure to give it shape. Or we can do this little by little with the structure already inside. But that would imply to tug some parts because probably the structure doesn't have a perfect fit with the frog. And the legs, we will leave these for the end because they have to be stuck on once we have assembled the two parts of the silicone frog with the structure inside. Okay, after sticking all this section down to there, I think it's the moment to install it on its structure. And I think it's still is flexible enough to be able to fit in there without problems. So that's what we're going to do now. Before we put it on, we have to sandpaper all the connections with solder. <coughs> Any little bit that might be pointed or might cut through the silicone, we have to sand it off, leave it perfect. The other problem I found is that the silicone inside a ping pong ball, the ping pong ball is of plastic, so it doesn't let the silicone breathe and cure. So I was trying the, the eyes and the copper bar just came out. It wasn't hard enough, the silicone yet, and it didn't work. So I understand I'm going to have to leave it there about many days, maybe a week, for it to get really hard.
the silicone, when in contact with the plaster, comes out a dull colour. But when we prepare the silicone directly, without any contact with the plaster, it ends up shiny. And that produces two different kinds of surfaces, two different shades. To make this even, the only option is to make the whole surface shiny and then make it dull using talcum powder. We sprinkle talcum powder on the shiny surface and with that we make it matte or dull. At least that is my intention. If this mask or puppet is part of a live show, the fact it's shiny is not a big deal. It even looks quite good. But with video using lights, these reflections break the rules and we must remove them. I will show you how I manage to even the shades. First, we prepare some silicone. We mix in the colors. In this case, brown with yellow. Then we mix with white gas. Thus, we dilute the silicone so we can apply it with a brush. Okay, almost no lumps, and it's liquid enough to brush it all over the surface. There, I got the legs out. There are some notorious, terrible mistakes. And I'm going to have to patch these parts. Because they can't stay like that. Here, this and this. This might get by. We might say, oh, the frog is like that. But no. These mistakes, the joints here, have to be fixed. And we have to cut off all spillovers that are evidently not a part of the figure. But we're just about done. There, we're finished. I fixed and retouched the arms. I stuck the arms just below the head and I positioned it as it should be for a show. Now we will sprinkle some talcum powder to get the shine off its skin. To see how it looks with lights and lights. Then we sprinkle some tankum powder there. If we don't like the result, we can get the powder off easily with a wet wipe. There we are. We finished with the makeup. 
I like the result in general. It is basically as I wanted it, except for one detail. I believe this part here ended being too thick, and that's the reason why it's not flexible enough. It is too hard, and it is very difficult to open the mouth to make him speak. And I don't know if it can be fixed. Maybe I'll have to redo all this section, cut it out, and make it again, but thinner. Maybe make it on the mold, and then stick it on here. As it can be disassembled, it's not so difficult to fix. But I'm not going to do that now because there is no time. This video is already much too long, so we will cut it here. The eyes are also working, but I don't want to move them much right now because I'm afraid the silicone in the left eye has not cured completely yet. And if I move it too much, it might ruin the process. But it should work well. And that would be it. And what do you think, Mr. Frog? Oh, I love to be alive now. Thank you very much, creator, my creator. Ha, 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 ha. Well, now I've got a friend to accompany me in my days when I'm alone. And here we are. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.